Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to balance an electronic gimbal. Alright, so this process should be the same on pretty much any electronic handheld gimbal um, or any gimbal for that matter. The Ronin M which I had was pretty much pretty much the same way you balance it, pretty much the same physics in mind. Um, so make sure that before you mount your camera on there that the camera is set up exactly the way you're going to be using it when you're filming. So make sure you've got your SD card in there, your battery, um, lens cap off, that's extremely important. You wouldn't believe it but the lens cap can actually, it feels like it weighs nothing but it'll definitely throw the gimbal off and I'll show you that later. Uh, if you're going to be filming with your screen out, make sure it's out when you're balancing. I usually have it closed. And so what I'm going to do, I've reset, I've just thrown all the settings everywhere on this gimbal, um, just so I can show you how to balance it. Now, I've got my quick release base plate on here, and I use that so that once the camera's balanced, um, I don't have to balance it every time I use it. I just chuck it on, and it, usually it stays in balance pretty well. So, unless I change a lens or something like that should be the same. So I'm going to clip my camera in now. Oh, I think I've moved that too far over when I was resetting the gimbal. So let me just, uh, let me just push this over. So it's over quite a bit. So actually before I mount my camera, I'm going to show you the axes and which ones we're going to be working with. So we have this one at the front here, this one that goes back and forth like that. And that there is the tilt axis right there and then this one that goes up and down or like that it's like a roll that's the roll axis and then the one on the bottom here that swivels off the actual handlebar uh, the actual controller part that's the pan axis so we'll be working with three axes so there's three things we need to adjust but you'll also need to adjust the things on the bottom here so on the bottom here you'll have um, that's pretty much the camera screw so you can play around with that that can go side to side and then you also have this adjustment here which um, adjust the camera, like the sled the camera sits on, back and forth as well. So there's about three to five adjustments, um, three main ones and two little ones where your camera sits. Sometimes you don't have much of a choice because your camera will only fit in a certain area. Like this, once I clip my camera in, come on on here. Camera's not clipping in for some reason. There we go. So it's falling really heavy to the left and I knew that was gonna happen straight away. So what I'm gonna do, everyone's uh, lens combo and camera combo is gonna be different. But I'm going to unscrew the uh, camera screw there, the one that's used for my uh, quick release mount. And I slide that pretty much all the way over to the right. You might not have to do this. Let me just stand up. I need to have a look at whether it's flat. All right, so I'm going to now do that up tight. Okay, so now we've got that. So now if I let go of the camera, we're going to see it's falling over the place. It's falling to the right and it's falling back. So the first thing that I usually do the first axis that I usually play with is the tilt axis and we do that by putting the camera on its back and don't just let go of your camera because you might smash your lens on something so actually I forgot to plug something in that I need in so this will, this could affect the weight it's just a remote cable that I use um, I can actually hit record on the gimbal and it will send a message to the camera to start recording so I'll make sure that's plugged in all right so what I usually do is lay the camera on its back and just Slow, slowly just let it go and see which way it's going to go. So it wants to go, it wants to fall backwards. So we can adjust that um, by using the tilt axis here. So that's this one here. And we're going to, I'm going to drop that all the way down, down to the bottom and see how that makes a difference. So, all right. And so now you can see when I'm trying to lay the camera on its back, it just wants to fall again. So um, let's just. There's a couple things we can adjust to make that happen, and that's the one we just touched, and it's the one on the bottom. Um, but I'm going to play with this one again, so we'll unscrew that. And what you want to do is just play with it until the camera seems to just float there on its own. So somewhere around here, it's getting close. So it's falling backwards now, so we want to push it forwards. This can be really frustrating, but it's, yeah, the better you balance it, the much better it's going to work. All right, so that looks really good there. See, I can let go of the camera. It's not falling backwards all forwards. So I can screw that in. And that axis looks like it's pretty good. So now what I'll do is tip the camera forward back to its normal state. And that's pretty much balanced. That shouldn't have happened because I messed around with it before. But um, let me just throw it off balance on one of the other axes and I'll show you how that works. That shouldn't have happened because I just I adjusted, pulled everything out of adjustment. All right, so now I'll push this. Oops, got to be careful of your lens and things like that. 
So now I've pushed the roll axes all the way out so the camera's falling to the left as you can see there. So in order to combat that, we're now gonna move the roll axis to the right so it doesn't fall to the left. So it's pretty much just if it's falling one way, you gotta go the opposite way. It's, it's pretty simple basic physics, but it can get frustrating. All right, so falling to the left a little bit, so we still go to the right, and every little millimeter makes a massive difference. So just bit by bit. And just keep in mind as well, if you have a lens that's a zoom lens, to just set it at a certain zoom level you're gonna be using. I've just got this wound all the way in at 14 mil, um, because I probably won't use this zoomed in or anything like that while it's on the gimbal. All right, so that looks good now. So we can now tighten that up. All right, so let's just see how we're sitting. All right, so it actually looks pretty good. And now the way that you test the pan axis, a lot of people do this a different way, but um, a way that can help is if you lift up, oops, if you lift up the side, it's balanced, it's just, it's not turned on, that's why it's not staying there. So if I lift, if you lift up one side, like that, and the camera starts to swing in a weird way, then that usually means your pan axis needs adjustment. So it's a bit annoying to do while the camera's just sitting there, but... So that's meant to happen on this crane, but if it falls really fast or you're trying to, if you're trying to sit the camera right in the middle and basically still like that, and it starts turning like that by itself, that means you'll need to adjust the pan axis, which is this one here. And that just means, so let me push that all the way in. I'll show you what I mean. See that? Whoops. It's just gonna go all over the place by itself. So if I try and sit it in a certain position, see how it wants to fly back itself? So that means the pan axis is out. And that's this one here. So that's controlled by going back and forward. And you just gotta play with that one until the camera doesn't wanna slide around on its own anymore. So that looks pretty good there. Let's go back to the middle. So it's staying there now. So now it looks like we're pretty well balanced across all axes. It's not rolling to side to side anymore. It's not tilting back and forth anymore. And um, it's not falling back and forward anymore. So that looks good. Let's turn it on. Um, like I said before, the better balanced the gimbal is, the much better, the much smoother footage, the much easier it is gonna to be to use. And it's the same with all gimbals, especially steady cams. I've had so many people say, oh, I can't get this balanced or, or sorry, it's really shaky. It's not working the way it's supposed to. You know, these are crap, this and that. The truth of the matter is most of the work is in the balancing and then you still need to know how to use it. <clears throat> Nothing about electronic gimbals is people think they can just buy them and just take awesome shots straight off the bat and it's not like that. You do, need, you do need a technique, which I'm gonna do a video on shortly. You do need a good technique and you do know how to balance it. You have to know how to balance it properly. Um, so a future video I wanna do is how to balance a glide cam, which is pretty much a manual version It's of this. So it's just got weights on the bottom, things like that, if you don't know what they are. Um, I wanna do a how to balance glide cam video and how to use a glide cam as well as how to use a stabilizer. So that's it, we're all balanced on here, as you can see. Camera's staying nice and still. It is powered on at the moment, so it's working the way it's supposed to be. Got our nice pans on. Yeah, so these handlebars, I uh, made them myself for around $10. If you wanna know how to make them, check out the video. I'll try and remember to put the link in the description below. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is turn off the gimbal, and I'm gonna show you what happens when you add a lens cap. So this is why you don't balance it with a lens cap, because you're gonna find out pretty quickly that something this light and small makes a massive difference. So I clip that on. All right, I'm holding the camera still. And there, look at that. Look at the speed that it drops. That's a ton of weight for the for the gimbal on that, you know, on this kind of axis. So, massive difference. And guys, I apologize if my audio isn't any good. I'm using a lapel mic, but it's a real cheap crap one. I need to get myself a, a nice road one. I'm gonna pick one up maybe this week or next week. So I'll be doing a review and audio comparison on that. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is how do you balance a electronic gimbal or handheld gimbal. And as I said, it's pretty similar across handheld ones and Ronins and things like that. You usually start by balancing these axes first, the forward, the, you know, whether it falls backward or forward. And look at that, that's beautiful. And then you start playing with these. And like I said, it just takes a little bit of understanding how it works and why it's falling one way, why it's falling another. It can be frustrating, but you will get it. Just take your time. Uh, if you have any questions about it at all, let me know in the comments below and I'll try and help out as best as I can. Um, but for now, that's about all. Thanks very much for watching. I hope it helped. Um, give me a big like if it did help. Make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel and I look forward to seeing you guys soon in more videos. Thanks very much for watching.